these are the twelve tribes of Israel. And this is it that their father spake unto them and blessed them. Every one, according to his blessing, he blessed them. And he charged them and said unto them, I am to be gathered unto my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron the Hittite, in the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is before Mamre in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought with the field of Ephron the Hittite for a possession of a burying place. There they buried Abraham and Sarah his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah his wife. And there I buried Leah. The purchase of the field and of the cave that is therein was from the children of Heth. And when Jacob had made an end of commanding his sons, he gathered up his feet into the bed and yielded up the ghost and was gathered unto his people. Before the Most High made the tribe of Judah the leaders and kings in Jacob, the tribe of Benjamin was the first leaders of the Israelite nation. Our nation's first king came from the tribe of Benjamin. The Most High took the kingship and leadership from the tribe of Benjamin and gave the kingdom to Judah during the reign of our nation's first king, Saul. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, Wast thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel? And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle, and it rent. And Samuel said unto him, the Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day, and hath given it to a neighbor of thine that is better than thou. The tribe of Benjamin was set up to rule and be great amongst their brethren. Due to their iniquity, the crown and leadership was removed from Benjamin and given to Judah. There was a great war between the house of King Saul and the house of David. The house of King Saul lost the war, and the Most High transferred the kingdom to Judah. Now there was long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. But David waxed stronger and stronger, and the house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker. So do God to Abner, and more also, except as the Lord hath sworn to David, even so I do to him, to translate the kingdom from the house of Saul, and to set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah, from Dan even to Beersheba. Then all Israel gathered themselves to David unto Hebron, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. And moreover, in time past, even when Saul was king, thou wast he that leddest out and broughtest in Israel. And the Lord thy God said unto thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be ruler over my people Israel. Therefore came all the elders of Israel to the king to Hebron. And David made a covenant with them in Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel, according to the word of the Lord by Samuel. The downfall of Benjamin gave Judah the kingdom. The Israelites didn't reject Saul from being king. The Israelites followed King Saul. King Saul was the king the Israelites wanted so they could be like the heathen nations. It was the Most High that rejected Saul from being king over Israel. Due to his multitude of iniquity, when King Saul was rejected as king, the tribe of Benjamin was also rejected as the leaders of the Israelite nation. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite. For I have provided me a king among his sons. In the Testaments of Judah, Judah said he obtained the kingdom due to his obedience to his father and mother. Before we get into the Testaments of Benjamin, the Bible has given us a lot of information about the tribe of Benjamin. The tribe of Benjamin had a chapter in the tale series on this channel, as well as the tribe of Levi. 
Because the southern kingdom of Judah consists of Judah and Benjamin and a remnant of Levites, Benjamin is the third chapter in the 12 tribe series. Benjamin is the youngest son born to Jacob. Rachel is Benjamin's mother. Rachel died giving birth to Benjamin. And it came to pass when she was in hard labor that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, thou shalt have this son also. And it came to pass as her soul was in departing, for she died, that she called his name Ben-Oni, but his father called him Benjamin. And Rachel died and was buried in the way to Ephrath, which is Bethlehem. Rachel named her son Benoni. Jacob changed his name and called his name Benjamin. Benoni means son of my sorrow and pain. The name Benjamin means son of my right hand. Jacob changed his son name from being a son of sorrow and pain to a son of my right hand. Let us hear what Jacob prophesied to his son Benjamin before he transitioned to the afterlife. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. In the morning he shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. What did Jacob meant when he said Benjamin shall raven as a wolf? In the testament of Benjamin, Benjamin said to his children that if they obey the Most High, if they walk in the holiness according to the commandments of the Most High, his children would dwell with him in the coming kingdom. Benjamin said to his children that he will no longer be called a ravening wolf due to the tribe of Benjamin's ravages. If ye therefore, my children, walk in holiness according to the commandments of the Lord, ye shall again dwell securely with me, and all Israel shall be gathered unto the Lord, and I shall no longer be called a ravening wolf on account of your ravages, but a worker of the Lord distributing food to them that work what is good. One of the fruits the tribe of Benjamin produce is that they are like a raven wolf. Have you ever seen a pack of wolves attack their prey? A pack of wolves are extremely violent. Oftentimes, wolves would eat their prey alive. Wolves would eat nearly anything to stay alive. Knowing the characteristics of a wolf can help identify the tribe of Benjamin. Wolves work together to take down their prey. A pack of wolves consists of a family unit. Raven means violent seizure of prey or property. Raven can also mean plunder. Jacob described his son as a raven wolf. One of the characteristics of the tribe of Benjamin is that they would be violent. In other words, savages. The scripture said, you will know a person by their fruits. Wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. The behavior of a person reveal more than the words they speak. Benjamin did not want to be known as a ravening wolf on the account of his tribe's ravages. The scriptures in the Bible give us a detailed account of the tribe of Benjamin's savagery. Like a wolf pack, a group of males from the tribe of Benjamin brutally attacked the wife of a Levite man, a daughter of Zion. The scripture said they violently assaulted her and tortured her all night that she succumbed to her injuries. After they violently abused her, they let her go. When she made it back to the house where she was staying, she died at the door. But the men would not hearken to him. So the man took his concubine and brought her forth unto them, and they knew her and abused her all the night until the morning. And when the day began to spring, they let her go. Then came the woman in the dawning of the day, and fell down at the door of the man's house, where her Lord was, till it was light. And her Lord rose up in the morning, and opened the doors of the house, and went out to go his way. And behold, the woman, his concubine, was fallen down at the door of the house, and her hands were upon the threshold. And he said unto her, Up, and let us be going. But none answered. Then the man took her up upon an ass, and the man rose up, and got him unto his place. The scriptures are correct when it said, You will know a person by their fruits. 
The act of violence towards the wife or concubine of the Levite was a testimony to the tribe of Benjamin from the words Jacob spoke to Benjamin concerning his tribe. The men did exactly what the scriptures prophesied they would do. They act like ravaging wolves. The scriptures in the Bible give us a detailed account of the tribe of Benjamin's ravaging ways. A daughter of Zion whom they killed due to their lustful perversion. Later on in this message, you will know about the tribe of Benjamin's perversions. When the Levite and his wife came to a city that belonged to the tribe of Benjamin, nobody received them. A man from the tribe of Ephraim dwelt in the city that belonged to the tribe of Benjamin offered the Levite a place to stay. And he said unto his servant, Come, and let us draw near to one of these places to lodge all night in Gibeah or in Ramah. And they passed on and went their way. And the sun went down upon them when they were by Gibeah, which belongeth to Benjamin. And they turned aside thither to go in and to lodge in Gibeah. And when he went in, he sat him down in a street of the city, for there was no man that took them into his house to lodging. And behold, there came an old man from his work out of the field of even, which was also of Mount Ephraim, and he sojourned in Gibeah. But the men of the place were Benjamites. And when he had lifted up his eyes, he saw a wayfaring man in the street of the city. And the old man said, Whither goest thou, and whence comest thou? And he said unto him, We are passing from Bethlehem Judah toward the side of Mount Ephraim. From thence am I. And I went to Bethlehem Judah, but I am now going to the house of the Lord, and there is no man that receiveth me to house. Yet there is both straw and provender for our asses, and there is bread and wine also for me, and for thy handmaid, and for the young man which is with thy servants. There is no want of anything. And the old man said, Peace be with thee. Howsoever let all thy wants lie upon me, only lodge not in the street. Due to the iniquity of the group of men towards the daughter of Zion and the tribe of Benjamin, savage ways, the entire tribe of Benjamin was judged by the Most High. The reason the tribe of Benjamin was judged harshly, when the elders and leaders of the Israelite nation wanted to find those men who killed the daughter of Zion to bring them to justice, nobody from the tribe of Benjamin would reveal the identity of the men who committed the crime against the daughter of Zion. Because the members of the tribe of Benjamin refused to reveal the identity of the men who committed the crime, the entire tribe was guilty. Instead of turning in those men, the tribe of Benjamin protected the criminals and gathered themselves to fight against their own people. And the tribes of Israel sent men through all the tribe of Benjamin, saying, What wickedness is this that is done among you? Now therefore, deliver us the men, the children of Belial, which are in Gibeah, that we may put them to death and put away evil from Israel. But the children of Benjamin would not hearken to the voice of their brethren, the children of Israel. But the children of Benjamin gathered themselves together out of the cities unto Gibeah to go out to battle against the children of Israel. The apple never far, far from the tree. I notice in this generation an increase of people not interfering when they see wrongdoing. Some people walk away and pretend they don't see, while others enjoy the violence by recording the act and spreading it across social media for entertainment. The ravaging ways of the tribe of Benjamin remind me of the recent story of the Cabo Six. These individuals brutally beat their so-called friend that ended the life of the young woman. I have heard a lot of Israelites and indigenous black males say if the crime is not committed against a member of their family, they will not intervene. Some express their fear of being put to death for intervening. There are some Israelite women and indigenous black women that will hide a criminal. If you possess these characteristics, the tribe of Benjamin may be your tribe. Remember, our nation is not in captivity due to keeping the laws. We are in captivity because of the multitude of sin against our nation. Every tribe has its good and bad. Every tribe was sent into captivity due to iniquity. The Most High removed his people from his presence because of their wicked ways. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel and afflicted them and delivered them into the hand of spoilers until he had cast them out of his sight. 
When I say examine yourself and don't deny what you discover, the truth you discover about yourself is being revealed for you to repent. The tribe of Benjamin are the creators of the no snitching policy. They remained silent and protected the criminals. Israelites, you have to be careful on participating in other people's sins. Do not be partakers with them or you will be judged with them. The Most High destroyed the tribe of Benjamin for their iniquity. The Most High sent Judah to destroy the tribe of Benjamin first in the civil war in our nation. And the men of Israel beside Benjamin were numbered 400,000 men that drew sword. All these were men of war. And the children of Israel arose and went up to the house of God and asked counsel of God and said, Which of us shall go up first to the battle against the children of Benjamin? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up first. The war between the 11 tribes against Benjamin was intense. The first two days of battle, the tribe of Benjamin won. The Benjamites successfully beat the other tribes. The tribe of Benjamin had fierce fighters. They fought as a team, just like a pack of wolves. And the children of Benjamin were numbered at that time out of the cities, 20 and 6,000 men that drew sword beside the inhabitants of Gibeah, which were numbered 700 chosen men. Among all this people, there were 700 chosen men left-handed. Everyone could sling stones at an hairbreadth and not miss. And the men of Israel went out to battle against Benjamin. And the men of Israel put themselves in array to fight against them at Gibeah. And the children of Benjamin came forth out of Gibeah and destroyed down to the ground of the Israelites that day, 20 and 2,000 men. And the children of Israel came near against the children of Benjamin the second day. And Benjamin went forth against them out of Gibeah the second day and destroyed down to the ground of the children of Israel again, 18,000 men. All these drew the sword. Then all the children of Israel and all the people went up and came unto the house of God and wept and sat there before the Lord and fasted that day until even and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. The success of the Benjamites did not last long. On the third day of battle, the Most High destroyed the tribe of Benjamin. And the children of Israel inquired of the Lord, for the Ark of the Covenant of God was there in those days. And Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, stood before it in those days, saying, Shall I yet again go out to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother? Or shall I cease? And the Lord said, Go up, for tomorrow I will deliver them into thine hand. And there came against Gibeah ten thousand chosen men out of all Israel. And the battle was sore, but they knew not that evil was near them. And the Lord smote Benjamin before Israel. And the children of Israel destroyed of the Benjamites that day twenty and five thousand and an hundred men. All these drew the sword. And the men of Israel turned again upon the children of Benjamin and smote them with the edge of the sword, as well the men of every city, as the beast, and all that came to hand. Also, they set on fire all the cities that they came to. After the brutal civil war within the Israelite nation, the elders and leaders from the 11 tribes made a covenant not to give their daughters for wives to the surviving sons of Benjamin. The Israelites believed the tribe of Benjamin was cut off after the war. Many of them repented for Benjamin. Now the men of Israel had sworn in Mizpeh, saying, There shall not any of us give his daughter unto Benjamin to wife. And the children of Israel repented them for Benjamin their brother and said, There is one tribe cut off from Israel this day. How shall we do for wives for them that remain, seeing we have sworn by the Lord that we will not give them of our daughters to wives? That is how Benjamin became the smallest tribe out of the Israelite nation. The tribe of Benjamin was almost genocide when the Most High judged the Benjamites for their violence against the daughter of Zion, as well as the other members of the tribe of Benjamin refusing to comply. Instead, they waged war with their people. When Samuel saw Saul and revealed to Saul that he would be king of Israel, 
Saul responded by saying he comes from the tribe of Benjamin, the smallest tribe in our nation. Saul went on to say his family is the smallest in the tribe of Benjamin. And Saul answered and said, Am not I a Benjamite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel, and my family the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin? Wherefore then speakest thou so to me? The tribe of Benjamin's iniquity caused them to be utterly destroyed. The Benjamites remained the smallest of all the tribes. The leaders during the generation of war against the tribe of Benjamin decided to slew the men and women from the camp of Jabesh Gilead for not appearing in Mizpah to the Most High. They preserved 400 women who were virgins from Jabesh Gilead for wives for the surviving males from the tribe of Benjamin. And the congregation sent thither 12,000 men of the valiantest and commanded them, saying, Go and smite the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead with the edge of the sword, with the women and the children. And this is the thing that ye shall do. Ye shall utterly destroy every male and every woman that hath lain by man. And they found among the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead 400 young virgins that had known no man by lying with any male. And they brought them unto the camp to Shiloh, which is in the land of Canaan. And the whole congregation sent some to speak to the children of Benjamin that were in the rock Ramon, and to call peaceably unto them. And Benjamin came again at that time, and they gave them wives which they had saved alive of the women of Jabesh Gilead, and yet so they sufficed them not. And the people repented them for Benjamin, because that the Lord had made a breach in the tribes of Israel. The tribe of Benjamin was repopulated with 400 virgins from Jabesh Gilead. Also, the Most High used the daughters from Shiloh to help rebuild the tribe of Benjamin. If the daughters of Shiloh came out to dance during the Feast of the Lord, then the men of Benjamin who escaped could take from the daughters of Shiloh for a wife. The scripture said all the women of Benjamin were destroyed from the civil war. Then the elders of the congregation said, How shall we do for wives for them? that remain, seeing the women are destroyed out of Benjamin. And they said, There must be an inheritance for them that be escaped of Benjamin, that a tribe be not destroyed out of Israel. Howbeit we may not give them wives of our daughters, for the children of Israel have sworn, saying, Cursed be he that giveth a wife to Benjamin. Then they said, Behold, there is a feast of the Lord in Shiloh yearly in a place, which is on the north side of Bethel, on the east side of the highway that goeth up from Bethel to Shechem, and on the south of Lebanon. Therefore they commanded the children of Benjamin, saying, Go, and lie in wait in the vineyards, and see, and behold, if the daughters of Shiloh come out to dance and dances, then come ye out of the vineyards, and catch you every man his wife of the daughters of Shiloh, and go to the land of Benjamin." To the daughters of Zion, let what happened to the women of Benjamin open your eyes. I hope you will make better decisions on whom you choose for a husband. Do not conspire together with wicked men. Do not provide a safe place for criminals. All of the women of Benjamin were killed while some of the sons of Benjamin survived after the war. In the Testament of Benjamin, Benjamin said to his children that their downfall will come from the spirit of fornication. Due to this iniquity, his children shall perish. Only a few will be saved. The spirit of fornication that would plague the Benjamites is the spirit of fornication of Sodom. Benjamin said his children shall renew wanton deeds with women. Wanton means deliberate and unprovoked. Wanton is also a person who is sexually unrestrained. Benjamin said the kingdom of the Most High will not be among the Benjamites. And I believe that there will be also evil doings among you from the words of Enoch the righteous, that ye shall commit fornication with the fornication of Sodom and shall perish, all save a few, and shall renew wanton deeds with women. And the kingdom of the Lord shall not be among you, for straightway he shall take it away. By now, everyone should know about the two cities the Most High destroyed called Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah is known for their sexual perversions. Benjamin said his children will fall by the spirit of fornication of Sodom. 
The book of Jude in the Bible said the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah gave themselves up to fornication and going after strange flesh. Because of their lewdness, those cities suffered from the judgment of eternal fire. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. What does the Bible mean when it says strange flesh? Strange flesh is the act of homosexuality. We have seen the rise of homosexuality in this generation. The Marine Kingdom is destroying many with the spirit of sexual perversion. Marine spirits or water spirits are behind every sexual sin. The Testament of Benjamin reveal the tribe of Benjamin will fall by this abomination. The alphabet community is increasing in the indigenous black community. When the Most High sent his angels to save Lot out of Sodom and Gomorrah, the angels were solicited by a group of men from Sodom who wanted to sleep with them. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my Lord, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and entered into his house, and he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot, and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. The Most High had no mercy for the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Once the Most High saved Lot and his family from those cities, the Most High burned down Sodom and Gomorrah with fire and brimstone. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. And he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah, and toward all the land of the plain, and beheld, and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. Everyone in this generation associates sodomy with homosexuality. Sodomy also means anal and oral sexual relations. Everyone who are participating in these acts are committing the sin of fornication of sodomy. Benjamin said to his children, they will fall by that spirit. The account the Bible gave us about the men of Sodom wanting to sleep with the angels that came to rescue Lot is very similar with the story of the men of Benjamin who brutally assaulted the Levite's wife. The men of Benjamin did not want to be with the daughter of Zion. They wanted to be with the Levite. Like the men of Sodom, the Benjamites came to the house where the Levite and his wife were staying, asking for the Levite so they can be with him. The men from Ephraim who lived in the Benjamite city, housing the Levite and his wife, rejected their offers. The old man offered his daughter and the Levite's wife. In order to save himself, the Levite offered his wife. That is how the daughter of Zion was assaulted and killed. Now as they were making their hearts merry, behold... The men of the city, certain sons of Belial, beset the house round about, and beat at the door, and spake to the master of the house, the old man, saying, Bring forth the man that came into thine house, that we may know him. And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them, and said unto them, Nay, my brethren, nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly, seeing that this man is come into mine house, do not this folly. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine. Them I will bring out now, and humble ye them, and do with them what seemeth good unto you. But unto this man do not so vile a thing. The story of the angels in Sodom and the Benjamites are parallel to each other. 
The Most High did to the tribe of Benjamin like he did to Sodom and Gomorrah. We are living in a generation where sexual perversion is at an all-time high. Many people are exploiting their bodies in these last days. The workers of iniquity who run this world with the Satans are deep into sodomy. They have created an environment in the beast system for people to experiment with their bodies in ways the Most High deem abominable. The workers of iniquity have laws encouraging the people to give into their lusts. The tribe of Benjamin, as well as many other tribes, have fallen victim to the spirit of fornication in a form of sodomy. Marine spirits are behind every sexual perversion. Benjamin revealed his tribe would fall into the perversion of sodomy. There are a lot of men in this generation that hate women. Social media is home to many of those males that display their hatred. Behind closed doors, those men are into what the Bible calls strange flesh. The indigenous black community has a high population of DL males. The Most High said, your body is the temple that housed the spirit of the Most High. Will you join the temple of the Most High with harlots and in homosexuality? The scripture said every sin a person commits is outside the body. However, the sin of fornication is against your own body. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. If the characteristics of the tribe of Benjamin match your character, there's a strong possibility that the tribe of Benjamin is your tribe. Benjamin said to his children on his deathbed to keep the laws and commandments of the Most High. Benjamin said to his descendants, the laws and commandments I leave you instead of an inheritance. Do ye, therefore, truth each one to his neighbor, and keep the law of the Lord and his commandments. For these things do I leave you instead of inheritance. Benjamin said to his children that his tribe would be redeemed when the Messiah comes and the Israelite nation is saved. The Testament of Benjamin talks about Joseph, Benjamin's full brother. Benjamin longed to see his brother. The Most High allowed him to see his brother Joseph through Jacob's prayer before they went to Egypt. Benjamin talked about the Messiah as well. Benjamin said to his children, there is one coming from the tribe of Judah and Levi. And there shall arise in the latter days one beloved of the Lord, of the tribe of Judah and Levi, a doer of his good pleasure in his mouth, with new knowledge enlightening the Gentiles. Benjamin and Judah have a long history together. When Jacob sent his sons, excluding Benjamin, to buy food in Egypt, there was a famine in the land of Canaan at that time. Joseph, who was already in Egypt, requests that they come back to Egypt with Benjamin. Judah promised Jacob that he would guard Benjamin with his life. And Judah said unto Israel, his father, Send the lad with me, and we will arise and go, that we may live and not die, both we and thou and also our little ones. I will be surety for him. Of my hand shalt thou require him. If I bring him not unto thee, and set him before thee, then let me bear the blame for ever. Now therefore I pray thee, let thy servant abide instead of the lad, a bondman to my Lord, and let the lad go up with his brethren. For how shall I go up to my father, and the lad be not with me, lest peradventure I see the evil that shall come on my father? The covenant Judah made with Jacob concerning Benjamin remained until the Most High removed his people from his presence. David and Jonathan reestablished the covenant when Jonathan, who is from the tribe of Benjamin, also the son of King Saul, asked David to look after his house. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And thou shalt not only while yet I live show me the kindness of the Lord, that I die not. But also thou shalt not cut off thy kindness from my house forever. No, not when the Lord hath cut off the enemies of David, every one from the face of the earth. 
So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, Let the Lord even require it at the hand of David's enemies. And Jonathan caused David to swear again, because he loved him, for he loved him as he loved his own soul. When the Most High divided our nation into two kingdoms, the Most High honored those covenants and gave to Judah one tribe. The tribe of Benjamin was the tribe the Most High gave to Judah. The rest of the ten tribes did not follow Judah. Albeit, I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy son, for David my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah with the tribe of Benjamin, and hundred and fourscore thousand chosen men which were warriors to fight against the house of Israel, to bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam the son of Solomon. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel, now see to thine own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. So Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. The southern kingdom of Judah consists of Benjamin and Judah. Only a remnant of the Levites live in the southern kingdom of Judah. The Levites live among all the tribes. In addition, Levi is not considered a tribe in our nation. Our nation remained divided until the Most High bring his people together again. When the Most High removed his people from his presence, only Judah remained after the Assyrian captivity of the northern kingdom. The scripture said in the book of Kings that only the tribe of Judah remained in Jerusalem. Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. For the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam which he did. They departed not from them until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight as he had said by all his servants the prophets. So was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day. The testament of Benjamin does not reveal if the tribe of Benjamin went into captivity with Judah. Benjamin commanded his children to love their neighbor, keep the commandments and laws of the Most High. Benjamin did not prophesy about the whereabout of his tribe in the last days. If Judah is the only tribe that remained after the northern kingdom was exiled, this would mean the tribe of Benjamin was also taken with the northern kingdom. Remember, the tribe of Benjamin is the smallest among the 12 tribes of Israel. The scriptures reveal Judah was the only tribe that remained until the tribe of Judah was dispersed to the four corners of this world. The Testament of Judah, Judah revealed that his descendants would go into captivity and live among the Gentiles. Judah did not mention Benjamin being with his tribe. For which things... Sake the Lord shall bring upon you famine and pestilence, death and the sword, beleaguering by enemies and revilings of friends, the slaughter of children, the rape of wives, the plundering of possessions, the burning of the temple of God, the laying waste of the land, the enslavement of yourselves among the Gentiles. Until the Lord visit you, when with perfect heart ye repent and walk in all of his commandments, and he bring you up from captivity among the Gentiles. And after these things shall a star rise to you from Jacob in peace. The northern kingdom of Israel went into the Assyrian captivity. As for the Levites, because they dwell among all the tribes, and Levi testified that his tribe would be a curse among the Gentiles, the diaspora consists of a remnant of the Levites and Judah. I believe the tribe of Benjamin are captives with the northern kingdom. The second book of Asterisk revealed that the northern kingdom decided that they would travel to a place where they could worship the Most High and keep his statutes and commandments in peace. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Osi, the king, whom Salmanazar, the king of Assyria, led away captive. And he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. Through the transatlantic slave trade, 
Many Israelites were dispersed into all the kingdoms of this world. In addition to being dispersed, presently, many Israelites migrate to other nations freely. The Israelites are living among the Gentiles all over the world. The only way to know what tribe you descend from, the Most High has to reveal it to you. The prophecies concerning each tribe by the sons of Jacob could help those who desire to know their tribe. Benjamin was 125 years old when he transitioned to the afterlife. And the number of the days of his life was 125 years. Before I started to read the testaments of the 12 patriarch, I believed most of the Israelites in the diaspora were of the tribe of Judah. After reading the testaments and hearing what the sons of Jacob prophesied about their children in the last days has helped me understand the character of the indigenous black people. A good example is the Cabo Six. Before the Most High increased my knowledge about the characteristics of the tribes, I would assume the people involved in the Cabo Six scandal are of Judah. Their behavior revealed to me that Benjamin may be their tribe. They display the same ravaging ways of the tribe of Benjamin. A person can speak lies to you, but a person's behavior can reveal so much more. Like I said before, every tribe has its good and bad. Everyone have sinned and fallen short of the glory of the Most High. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Not everyone in the tribe of Benjamin is into sodomy. Not every Benjamite is like a raven wolf. Just like in the tribe of Judah, not everyone are drunkards and harlots. Not everyone in the tribe of Levi loves the strange women and men. These are some of the characteristics that stands out in those tribes. Our nation is not without sin. In the Testament of Benjamin, Benjamin said that our nation will be judged first, confirming what the scripture said in the Bible that judgment starts with the Israelites. But the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? The Most High has shown that he will use anyone to do his will. If your heart is pure before the Most High, he can use you to do his will. The Most High indeed used the tribe of Benjamin to reach the righteous Gentiles. Benjamin said to his children that in them, the prophecy of the Messiah will be known. Indeed, the Most High used Paul in the New Testament from the tribe of Benjamin to teach the Gentiles and Israelites about the Messiah and the kingdom of the Most High. And these shall be fulfilled the prophecy of heaven concerning the Lamb of God and Savior of the world, and that a blameless one shall be delivered up for lawless men, and a sinless one shall die for ungodly men in the blood of the covenant, for the salvation of the Gentiles and of Israel, and shall destroy Belair and his servants. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Israelites, as we continue to uncover truth in the testaments of the patriarch, I hope the truth discovered in the scriptures is leading everyone into repentance. I hope every Israelite can understand there is a need for all Israelites, regardless of your tribe, must repent. In addition, the awakening is about repentance, not so much on what tribe is the most significant. When the disciples asked the Messiah who would be the greatest in the kingdom, the Messiah said, if you humble yourself like a little child, you would be the greatest in the kingdom. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called the little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Your tribe doesn't determine your salvation. Repentance does. As our knowledge increase and history is correcting itself, do not let the spirit of pride put you at risk to miss the coming kingdom. Israelites, repent morning, day, and night. Do not let the sun go down and not repent. Israelites, continue to seek the face of the Most High so that he can order your steps. Blessed be the Lord, because he hath heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him. 
I'm helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise him. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving strength of his anointed. Save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Feed them also, and lift them up forever.